On the shores of the Gulf of Mexico, engineers are building a technological masterpiece called Perdido. 45,000 tons of steel will be transformed into the most advanced oil rig in the world. This rig will plunge its drills nearly three kilometers down to the sea floor. A giant in the extreme world of offshore engineering. 8th of August, 2008. Today is a big day for the builders of Perdido. They are moving the bottom half of their oil rig from the construction dock in Texas out into the ocean. 18,000 tons of metal will travel 300 kilometers into the Gulf of Mexico. Here it will form the base for a state-of-the-art floating oil rig that will tap into three newly discovered oil fields. Perdido is expected to produce enough oil every day to fill up 150,000 cars with petrol. When it comes online, it will reach deeper into the sea than any other oil rig on the planet. Oil has been the engine of the world economy for over a century, but hardly ever without an impact on the environment. In 1884, the Great American Oil Rush profoundly alters the sleepy town of St. Mary's in Ohio. The lure of a quick fortune brings in a flood of would-be Rockefellers. Within a few months, they completely transform the landscape. Oil rigs spread across the plain to extract the black gold from an oil field over 300 meters below. But one day, their relentless march comes to a grinding halt at the shores of Grand Lake. It is only three meters deep, but it becomes a big obstacle for the drilling crews. Engineer Ed McCann demonstrates why. It's curious, but drilling in the olden days didn't actually involve drills that we imagined spinning around. They used percussive techniques of banging. And uh, if we have a look at this here, you'll see that all they really did to drill was they lifted a, a weight up with a point on it and let it fall onto the rock. Then you do it again. And if we look closely at this, what we can see is that we're making a tiny little chip every time. So you have to do this a lot. But once you've got this mechanised, you could do up to 10 metres a day like this, which was plenty and adequate. Now, once they moved this sort of operation out over water and they started looking for stuff that was underneath water, they found themselves in a whole new ballpark. So here we've got our tank of water and we're going to give our percussion drilling another try. I lift up the pile hammer and I drop it and you can see immediately it's not going nearly as fast through the water. The other thing that's happening is it doesn't go down straight, it tends to deviate off. And this is essentially because the water provides more resistance to the falling pile hammer than air. And frankly, I could carry on doing this for the rest of time and I wouldn't dig a very big hole. Fortunately, there is a solution, and it's this. So the way that this works is, is the tube is basically pushed down into the soil so it forms a reasonable seal there. Then you pump the water out and the pile hammer is then able to act as if it was in dry air. So let's see what happens. I've got my tube here and we can see pretty much straight away that it's back towards the fall velocities that we had when it was in open air. And what's more, it's hitting right on the spot. This simple tube gets the oil men past the watery barrier. They build wooden platforms for their drilling equipment and drill down into the bed of the lake. Steadily, they chip away at the rock until they finally break through to the oil. 
Within just a few years, hundreds of rigs spring up on Grand Lake, which becomes the birthplace of the offshore oil rig. While the base of the Perdido rig is still on its way to the oil field, an exploratory drilling rig, the Clyde Boudreau, is preparing the ground at the site. Perdido will tap into 35 different wells, and the men on the Clyde Boudreau are pre-drilling 22 of them. Clyde Boudreau has a drill with a twist in its tail. As it plows through the rock under the rig, there comes a point where it needs to change course. Operators on the surface remotely activate a motor in the drill pipe, which bends it sideways and pushes it out horizontally. This way, the Clyde Boudreau builds a web of oil wells that extends to the farthest reaches of the oil fields, 20 kilometers across. The Clyde Boudreau's drilling crew can drive through over 300 meters of rock every day. Since the rig started work, its drills have been turning 24 hours a day, seven days a week. After three days at sea, the base of Perdido arrives at the oil field. Now the crew get ready for the next stage of the operation. Today they will install the bottom half of the rig, called the spar. On Perdido we decided to build a spar because that would give us the stability that we needed. And the spar is basically a can. The problem with the can shape is that when it floats, it wants to naturally float in this orientation, right? And uh, we need it to be in this orientation. The crew faced the mammoth task of upending 18,000 tons of steel. They released the air from the flotation tanks and then pumped seawater into the bottom end of the spar. This flips the whole structure into an upright position. And now they must attach it to the ocean floor, thousands of meters below. Instead of driving impossibly long steel piles, the engineers at Perdido use ropes and chains to hold the rig in place. But they need something to secure the ropes on the seabed. So they attach huge metal cylinders to the end of the ropes. Once these cylinders, called suction anchors, reach the sea floor, the engineers use clever physics to drive them into the ground. This is what's called a spud can or a suction anchor. It's used to secure oil rigs like the Perdido to the ocean floor, but obviously at about 50 times the size. If I turn on this vacuum pump, you can see it creates a suction. So I do the same in the water. If I place it on the ocean bed, which this represents, initially it only goes into its depth under its own weight, so it's hardly getting into the ocean floor at all. But as I pump out the air in the water, it draws itself down into the ocean bed, creating a firm anchorage. There it's now secure. And obviously, at about 20 feet diameter, a group of those will provide an extremely firm anchorage, which would be almost impossible to pull out. Suction anchors are the perfect solution for anchoring deep water platforms like Perdido. But activating a suction pump at the bone-crushing depths below the rig is impossible for human divers. So the engineers use robotic divers, called ROVs, to do the job. 
An operator four kilometers away maneuvers the ROV towards the suction anchor and attaches a pump. This removes the water and creates a vacuum that sucks the anchors down and locks Perdido's foundations into the seabed. Although the Gulf of Mexico is plagued by hurricanes, there is a more insidious danger for Perdido lurking under the surface. Here in the Gulf, we have to be able to survive what we call a loop current, which is a, a big circular current in the Gulf of Mexico, where we get very high currents on the order of five or six feet per second. And what that causes is it causes uh, the spar, in particular, but any cylinder, to vibrate in the current. On the scale of Perdido, this phenomenon could cause havoc. Vortices forming in fast currents could make the rig sway nearly 100 meters sideways and damage it. But Perdido uses a simple device to deal with the currents. A thin strip of steel spiraling down its side called a strake. Without it, the swaying motion of the rig would pull on the drill pipe. This could rupture the pipe and cause a disastrous oil spill. The strake also stops the crew from getting seasick. Because Perdido is a floating rig, the engineers don't need deep sea divers to put it together. But today they are facing the mother of all assembly jobs. They are about to lift the 9,000 ton platform deck called the top sides onto its base. The crane barge doing the deck lift is the most powerful of its kind in the world. It has lifted many top sides in the Gulf, but none as big and heavy as the Perdido deck. The engineers are confident that the barge is up to the task. But they can't be entirely sure. The worst case scenario is that we drop the topside. It's happened here in the Gulf of Mexico a number of years ago. There was a heavy lift. Uh, top sides have been built after several years of construction. We picked it up and, uh, and it was dropped to the seafloor. With a price tag of several billion dollars, dropping the top sides is not an option. So everything is checked and checked again. And then once more for good measure. Then the teams hold their breath as the operation begins. The crane lifts the top sides off its barge. to place the deck precisely onto the docking points on the platform base. After 10 hours, the top sides is finally in place. One of the biggest lifts in history, completed without a hitch. Once the bottom half is in the upright position, it isn't very stable. As soon as the deck is added, the rig gets very top heavy and could easily flip. The solution is 13,000 tons of pulverized iron ore. This is pumped into a tank at the bottom of the spa, which gives Perdido an extremely low center of gravity, so it becomes impossible to flip. 
when we put that weight in the bottom of the spar, it's inherently stable. It's not going to flip over or get out of alignment. Other floating structures, uh, weight and stability is a real issue. So when you put weight on one side of the platform, you got to put ballast on the other side of the platform to make sure it doesn't tip over. But we don't have that problem on a spar. July the 6th, 1988. Piper Alpha, the largest oil platform in the North Sea, is rocked by a series of explosions. The platform is destroyed and tons of oil spill into the sea. From a crew of 226, only 59 survive. The others perish in the blaze. Piper Alpha is a grim eye-opener for the oil industry. The biggest danger to a steel structure is fire, because the heat weakens the steel. So I've got these two drinks cans. They're going to be my steel columns. One of them is painted in regular paint, the sort of thing you'd find at home. But the other one has special intumescent paint on. So. Let's see how it works. I'm going to load the columns as if they were part of an oil rig. And then I'm going to set fire to them. The intumescent paint reacts violently to the heat. It puffs up and begins to char. But this is the perfect recipe for fire protection. The unprotected steel just can't take the heat. So this column's gonna go. And this column is being protected from the fire by the formation of charcoal. It has a mineral inside that causes the expansion and the insulating layer prevents heat being conducted to the steel and weakening it. So this looks like it'll go for a long time. It's certainly long enough for people to escape. It might give you half an hour of fire protection. Piper Alpha lay 180 kilometers offshore. Perdido is nearly twice as far from the coast. The men are over two hours flight time from rescue. So delaying the destructive effects of a fire on the rig is crucial. Engineers have applied a fireproof coating to all the critical parts of the steel structure. This guarantees they will survive the heat for longer. And to protect the workers from explosions, engineers have fitted 18 steel panels to separate the production side from the living quarters. In the event of a blast, these panels deform and soak up the energy of the shock wave without rupturing. By remaining intact, this blast wall shields the living quarters from fire. The oil industry has learned its lesson from the Piper Alpha disaster. Pedido uses state-of-the-art technology to make sure its workers don't risk their lives in pursuit of the black gold. Perdido reaches deeper into the ocean than any oil rig before it, and it uses technology to try and reduce the environmental impact that oil rigs have had in the past. Standing on the shoulders of historic engineering giants, this really is the ultimate oil rig. Until someone builds an even deeper one. <laughs>